Although over the years many had tried to break it, Englishman John Cobb still held the land speed record of 396 miles per hour. Thompson would spend eight years preparing for an assault on this achievement. No, it was not intended to be accomplished in Thompson's 1935 Ford. This heavy, underpowered car was all he could afford at the time. Even so, he managed an excellent top speed of 141 miles per hour, which set the stage for future test runs. Fritz Voigt had been a close friend and Thompson's chief mechanic for many years. Now, as they prepared to press for the land speed record, this association would have to be stronger than ever. The way to get any assistance racing is you have to have notoriety. The only way to get notoriety is have records. I don't think he really wanted the records just that Mickey Thompson could have the records. He wanted to get a stepping stone to get assistance. Step two was a car designed for a speed of 200 miles per hour. For more power, I combined the first supercharged Chrysler engine with a flathead Ford. For lightweight, I designed a body using a new experimental material. It was called fiberglass. It was the first fiberglass car ever built, and we hit our goal, 200 miles an hour. Step three led to more concentration on wind resistance. Powered with two Chrysler engines, this first Thompson Streamliner was poised for the 300 mile per hour mark. Firestone tires we had on the two engine car grew so much they would grow into the body and we took a Boy Scout axe and cut a real expensive aluminum body out to get clearance. And uh, the Firestone people just weren't interested in making them tires. After two passes, I got up to 285 and the right rear tire started throwing trips. By the time I'd geared down, it had ripped off sections of the body. But we still managed to get to a speed of 298.3. I was satisfied with the run, but I always knew I needed to build a car with more power to go over 400 miles an hour. And I also needed improved tires. 